my fellow skeptics and believers and everyone in between. Welcome back to another episode of Ghost Machine. I have a balloon. Yes, I'm playing with a balloon. Because in this episode, we are not going to look at ghosts or a haunted house or something weird like that. We're going to look at a UFO. And for the second time in my career, I've had to go out to a party store and get a balloon. Actually, it would be the third time. Because the second time I got the balloon and I took some pictures and video and then it got stuck in a tree and we tried to get it out and the line snapped and... Ooh. <laughs> That's a blooper. Um, the line snapped and it flew away. And like all the way that way. <laughs> Forever. So there might be a UFO sighting around Buffalo. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, back to the video. All right, so let's take a few steps back and start at the beginning so I can give you some context of what's going on here. About a week and a half ago, I received an email that contained a link to a News Nation video segment. In that segment, it talked about a UFO sighting, an alleged UFO sighting that was taken by a woman that was flying home from Myrtle Beach to LaGuardia Airport. So let me show you, at least in part, the news segment that I watched. Michelle Reyes was flying over New York City with her daughter, and she was sitting by a window. Um, when she did what a lot of us do, we, you know, take pictures out the window, nice video of the New York skyline. It's an amazing view. But what Michelle did not expect to see was a cylinder-shaped object zipping across her line of sight near LaGuardia Airport. Was it a bug inside the plane, maybe? Well, she played the video back to look, and no, it was not a bug. Whatever it was, it was definitely outside the plane, and it was flying on its own, and it was really, really fast. All right, so you're pretty much caught up with the, most of the information that I had at the time, and I responded to my boss, who had originally sent me the email, and said, hey, it looks like a balloon. To which he responded, yeah, that's what Mick West said. And then secretly, I was like, yes, we're on the same page. Awesome. I also didn't think it was going very fast. Uh, at the end of that segment that I showed, um, the host, uh, Ashley Banfield, uh, claims that it looks like it's going very, very fast. And I, I disagree. I completely disagree because it looks like it's basically standing still and the plane, which is going about 200 to 240 miles an hour, is going past it really fast. And I think there's like the apparent speed. Anyway, moving on. So the witness goes on to say that she uh, reached out to the FAA uh, to let them know that there might be a hazard in the area, which is cool. I mean, that's that's what you should do if you see something in the sky, you know, next to your plane. Yeah, you know, let them know. So when she didn't get a response back from the FAA, like right away, she reached out to other organizations like the Na uh, National UFO Database and Enigma Labs. And that brings in Ben Hansen the host of a show called UFO Witness on Discovery+. Plus. And I've written about him way, way back, a couple years ago, when it came to, like, a ghost hunting show where he was going out and, you know, looking at haunted houses and, you know, some shady footage going on that was, like, said to be a ghost. Wink, wink. Anyway, he comes on the News Nation segment and kind of says that he did some analysis and that he thinks that the object is outside the plane, it's not a bug, and that it doesn't appear to be fake, which I agree with. You know, I agree. That's cool. Because uh, it looks like it's outside the plane. It looks like it's a bit in focus, like the wingtip. So, uh, I mean, when you when you look at the video, and I'll put the, the insert here, when you look at the original video, you can see that the, the window frame is kind of out of focus and the object that's outside the alleged ufo is actually more in focus than the window frame of the uh, the airplane window i also think the object is a little bit too large uh to be a bug which i mean you're talking like really really tiny as opposed to a maybe a balloon that's like two or three feet long so i wanted some more information and i kept looking around i found an article from the new york post and they reached out to a gentleman named thomas wertman and he is the director, a state director of the MUFON network in Ohio. And he looked at the footage. He didn't think it looked like a helicopter or a drone or any kind of military aircraft. Uh, he didn't think it was a bug or anything like that. He thought it was pretty interesting. He also could not rule out that it might be a weather balloon or maybe a larger animal that's flying at that altitude. So after reviewing all the information that I could find, I'm still 
sticking with my initial impression. This is a balloon. So obviously my next step is to go get a balloon and try to recreate the footage. <laughs> Let's go. I need a balloon. This'll do. I love my job. This is what I get to do. <laughs> Test UFOs with balloons. This is awesome. <laughs> goes. We got it stuck in a tree and the line broken. Now it's free. Go balloon. Be free. Become another UFO. Bye bye. So yeah, I had to go out and get a new balloon <laughs> because I still had experiments to run. But here are some photos that, uh, that I took from the video. The still shots that I took from the video. And you can see that they resemble this alleged UFO. And I also went ahead and did an overlay here. So I took a still shot that I took uh, and overlaid it onto the original video. And you can see, like, it's the same size, it's same shape, it looks the same. I mean, it's a pretty good match. So for me, I was satisfied. And, you know, it, it, it's a balloon. I, I think it's a balloon. There's nothing to indicate anything else. Uh, other than most likely a balloon. That's that's what I was going to go with. But I still had this nagging feeling, you know, like I could do more. I could make, you know, a little bit more entertaining video if I kept going. You know, what other information could I provide? And there's plenty of information. I mean, News Nation, they had Ben Hansen on to, to get his take on it, his analysis. Uh, the New York Post had Thomas uh, Wertman, who was a MUFON guy, to get his analysis. And I thought... Who's my go-to guy when it comes to UFO analysis? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Let's call him up. Here we are. I got Mick West here. Uh, and he is like my go-to guy for anything UFO related because he breaks it down in the most simplest terms that anyone, even me, can understand it. So thank you, Mick, for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Glad to be here. Uh, good. I'm, I'm happy. You're <laughs> glad to be here. Uh, so your take, you, you, you mentioned mm -hmm. this on your Metabunk, you, you started a thread. So I guess the first question is when you first saw this video footage, what, what was your first impression? Well, first of all, like, it looked like a lot of other footage that we've seen. We've seen uh, balloons uh, or other objects appear to zip by plane, or we've seen mysterious objects appear to zip by planes. And the, the, the weird thing about it is they always go in the exact opposite direction of the plane, which is a bit of a clue. So the first thing that you've got to think about is like, is this just something that's just floating in the air? Uh, you know, there's a few other things we had to eliminate first. Like, was it like something that was inside the plane or outside the plane? Sometimes people will uh, record like a, a speck of dirt on the window or something like that. Right. Uh, so we can eliminate that by looking at the focus of the object. And we can see the edge of the window at the bottom of the image is a, a lot less in focus than the object itself is, which means that the object can't be inside the plane. It has to be something outside the plane. Right. And we're assuming it's not a fake video as well. It looks like it's real, seems like it's a real person who took it. Uh, you know, there's always a possibility it's fake, but you know that's something that uh, you, you can't 100% eliminate, but we assume that it's a real video. So then okay. you've got to figure out you know, what what is this, this object? What could it be? Uh, the obvious suggestion is that it's just a balloon. If you're going with a balloon hypothesis, you've got to try to figure out like uh, you know what uh, what what parameters would be consistent with a balloon and what would you what would disprove it being a balloon. Like if it was moving really really fast relative to the air, uh, that would prove it's not a balloon. If it was moving in the opposite direction or if it was moving closer to the plane or further away from the plane, that would mean it's not a balloon. But if it's something that's just going past the plane, then yeah, you know, balloon is definitely a contender. So okay. the next thing you got to do is try to figure out um yeah you know, how is it is it consistent with the size of a balloon you know balloons are typically like one foot in diameter to maybe a few feet but a typical right. party balloon is just going to be a foot or so so you know then we kind of get into doing doing the math <laughs> doing the math so in order to do the math i think you, you would first have to figure out what flight they were on um yeah and how, how did you do that yeah, that was just a bit of uh, you know, kind of 
investigatory work. Uh, basically, like the person who posted the video of Michelle Ray's, uh, she there was no link to her original post in the, the stories that were published in the media. So I had to kind of track down basically her Facebook page. And I, I first of all found uh, a friend's Facebook page who had posted it. And that friend gave some details as to where uh, she was coming from. Okay. Uh, and so we knew like the, 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 the origin airport and we knew the destination airport, you know, we knew they were going to, uh, LaGuardia in New York and you knew where they were coming from. Uh, so, and then I found Michelle's post and that told us what day it actually was. Uh, okay. and so knowing what day someone's flying on and knowing where they're coming from and where they're going to, there's only a limited number of flights that it can be. And if you look in the video, you very briefly get this little glimpse of uh, the winglet at the end of the wing, you know, the kind of turned up bit at the end of the wing. And it says, um, what does it say? It says, yeah, you can't, you can't really read what it says, but okay. uh, it's, it actually is a little bit of the word howdy, which okay. is uh, something that Spirit Airlines put on their wings. So we know it's a Spirit Airlines flight. And okay. all that information, basically, I, I then took that, that uh, you know, the location, the origin airport, the destination airport, roughly what time it was. Now, I could figure out what time it was by looking at uh, the shadows because you we know where they are we know there's a very distinctive bridge down below so we uh, uh you, you can you can also see the shadow of that bridge and so you know that the sun is you know, roughly in a kind of a southwesterly direction which puts the time to be something somewhere around two or three in the afternoon local time okay. uh, so with all that information it was pretty easy to narrow down exactly which flight it was and so we figured out that flight then you can download the actual 3D track of that flight. You can actually download the uh, the ADSB data, which is kind of like you know a radar track of the plane, and you can stick that into Google Earth, and you can see exactly where she would have been when she took that particular video. Okay, that's great. I mean, that that's I love that precise detail. Uh, so once you have all this information, what's you talked about doing the math? What's what's that mean? What what's that entail? Well, first thing that you get from that is that you know how fast the plane is moving uh, because the, the, the information that you download from that tells you, you know, exactly how fast it is. You get a little graph of it in Google Earth. And because it was coming down towards the airport to landing, it's a little bit slower than normal. It's about 240 miles per hour, which is obviously very fast, but for a plane, it's not, not particularly fast, especially a bigger plane. Uh, so since we know how fast it's going, then we can do some calculations as to if this object was a balloon, then it would just be sitting there in the air and the plane would be zipping past it at 240 okay. miles per hour, which is you know, essentially the same thing as the plane standing still and the object moving past at 240 miles an hour, which okay. is what gives you this really cool illusion of, uh, of motion. Right. So we, we know how fast the object would be moving if it was a balloon. And uh, we can also look, look in the video, we can see how much the object moves between individual frames of the video. Okay. Uh, and that and how many how many frames was it in? The, it, it was only it was only visible for about five frames uh, of okay. the video, uh, going from left to, from right to left on, on the on the screen. Okay. Uh, and between each of those frames, it actually moves quite a bit. It moves uh, you know, more than it is as long as it appears here, 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 here. So okay. we know that the object's about this big on screen, and we know that it moves about this much. Uh, between individual frames. And we know that an individual frame is 1 30th of a second because it's regular right. video, it's running at 30 frames per second. Uh, uh, so we know that it's moving from here to here in 1 30th of a second. Uh, okay. So we know also, you know, theoretically, if it's a balloon, how fast it is moving. So if we know how fast it's moving and we know it moves from this point to this point in a certain amount of time, we can figure out what that distance is. Uh, because we know it's moving, say, at uh, 240 miles per hour. That works out about 300 and something uh, feet per second. Uh, so you divide that by 30. It gives you about 10 or 11 feet per second. I can't remember the exact number. Okay. Uh, and that tells you what that distance is. That tells you how much it's moved in one frame. And oh. then you can divide that by the length of the object. Now, the object itself is about this big on screen. It moves that much in a 30th. So it's moving you know, so many times its own length. It works out to be a four, about four and a bit uh, times its own length. So you can then take um, 
that that length there that you know it's moved if it is a okay. balloon and then you divide it by 4.2 and it gives you a number and that number ended up being yeah i can't remember now <laughs> um ended up being point. about 2.7 feet okay and uh, so that's you know a bit under three feet long and these are okay. all fairly rough estimates but you know we we know that we have something that if it's a balloon uh and it's just sitting there in the air then its size is definitely around 2.7 feet and that's consistent with with a balloon and we found you know balloons that are similar like there's there's various uh long balloons like i say a number one balloon for a party balloon and right. you can get them in black as well so it's entirely mm -hmm. consistent with being a balloon yeah and we don't have any other information that would indicate that it's moving on its own power that yeah. it's, it's actually going like doing anything except basically sitting there for that five thirty. 30th of a second where we see it in in the video so exactly yeah uh, it's it's not moving uh closer to the plane or further away from the plane it stays right. the exact same time throughout the entire thing another thing you notice about it that i didn't really talk about is that there's a little highlight on the on the balloon on the object right. and that moves that changes as it goes uh, across. And that kind of indicates that it's relatively close to the plane. If it was far away, that highlight wouldn't change as much because the angles uh, would stay relatively about the same. But you know, if something's close to you, then it, it changes, uh, it, you know, the, the reflection changes as it moves across a lot more than if it's like further back. Right. Uh, so you know, that also indicates that it's fairly close. And okay. you know, how far away is it? You know, that's something you can also do, do the math if, you you've you've you're assuming it's a balloon you know we know that it's everything we've seen so far is consistent with it being a balloon how far away is it you, know, you can do the math there it works out it's it's round about 100 feet away which okay. is about kind of one and a half wing lengths past the end of the wing so it's something fairly close to the plane but not not too too close you know the pilot wouldn't have swerved to avoid it or anything uh, it's just something that happened to be there like uh, about 100 feet away and just basically sitting in the air and the motion of the plane creates this illusion of motion from left to right right to left uh, so what about um I, I noticed some people brought up the idea that it, it wasn't affected by the plane going by um like no turbulence or anything like that any any idea about why i mean i personally yeah. i i thought it was just because it went by so fast we're not seeing the result of the the uh the motion yet we're not seeing the turbulence from the plane yet. Well, that the turbulence from a plane is behind the plane. <laughs> you're not going to get uh, you know, much turbulence. Uh, yeah, say you're in a your passenger plane, you're ahead of the wings. There's hardly going to be any turbulence there. If you're behind the wings, you might see a little bit of turbulence. But this object, it was neither. It was nowhere near the wing. The thing is, it was uh, like about a hundred feet away from the plane. Uh, the plane's wingspan was about 80 feet, so the end of the wings are only like 40 feet away. So this object is over like 60 feet past the end of the wing. So it, okay. that area of air that you can see visibly there was had zero effect from the plane. Nothing at all would have touched it at all. There's no like you know shock waves or anything going out. Everything is behind the plane. You know if you're going in a boat. Uh, and you, you you see something that's like you know, 100 feet away to your left, you're not going to af affect that object until you're way past that uh, yeah that, that particular okay. object. Yeah. It probably would right. bounce around a little bit and like when it was uh, uh, half a mile behind you, but when it's right next to you, it's not going to do anything. Right. Okay. So I did go out. I, I got myself a balloon yeah. because, I, I mean, uh, to be honest, when because I got this link, I got the link for the video from Barry, uh, Barry Carr, and my immediate response was, looks like a balloon. It looks like a balloon to me. And he wrote back saying, well, that's what Mick said. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, all right, let me, let me go reach out to, to Mick. Um, but I did go out. I, I went to a party store. I got a balloon. And for me, like, I didn't get a number one. I got a number seven. Because for right. some reason, to me, it, it looks like not only is it on its side, uh, but there seems to be a little bit of a bump yeah, on the one side. That yeah and i'm like well if it's if it's horizontal which these balloons when they're filled with helium that's what they want to do they want to go mm. horizontal um and i was wondering like all right maybe this is slightly like it's not straight on with the plane but it's slightly moving and that's why you get the bump that's where the the corner of the seven is um but i mean i'm, I'm just going with that 
I put it on some line, let it go about 100 feet. Uh, I had my coworker Eric out with a rangefinder, so we knew how far away we were. And I got some video footage, which matches up really good. I mean, it looks. I took some screenshots uh, when it when it finally settled in that position, and it looks almost identical. But I would like to do something about like how how can we replicate? Yeah, maybe the the speed of going past. It. Do you have well, any yeah, that's the thing. You you can't uh, <laughs> you can't fly past it at two hundred forty miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, uh, what the you could do. Won't let me do that. <laughs> what you could do is um, kind of simulate that by going at one tenth that speed in your car. Like you do it do it twenty four miles per hour, uh, and then obviously be going past very slowly. But all you got to do is speed the video up, like run it ten times as fast. And it will be exactly the same as if you had gone past at 240 miles per hour. Oh, that's interesting. And that sounds like something I can definitely do. Um, and it won't get me in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> At least I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, all right, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do that. I'm going to try that out and uh, we'll see what the results are. All right. But otherwise, good. thank you so much. I appreciate your help. I appreciate the information. And uh, thanks a lot, buddy. All appreciate right. it. Yeah, it's a fun little case. Cool. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. All right, so one of my takeaways from that interview is that I get to do an experiment. <laughs> Yay! Let's go. All right, so we are at a secret location, a secret non-military base to do experiments. It's my house. So I set up a balloon, the balloon. This is the number seven black balloon that I picked up at the party store. I have it secured between two garbage cans so that it roughly holds the same shape uh, and it doesn't float away this time. And uh, I got a camera behind it. I'm gonna jump into my car. I'm gonna drive back and forth along the road because that's back there is about 100 feet. Um, it's actually 100 feet on the opposite side of the road. So as I drive by going that way, I should be able to get a good video of it and I'm gonna drive at about 20 to 25 miles an hour I'm gonna to try to do both 20 and 25 just to get a rough es estimate and then we're gonna speed the video up 10 times and that should give us the equivalent equivalent of driving by or flying by at about 200 to 250 miles an hour and then we'll see if the uh, the balloon is the same shape or same size actually in the frame and then we'll also see if we can get just five frames because that's how many frames it appears in the original video so there you go let's uh let's get to experimenting <laughs> my neighbors are gonna be like what the hell are you doing <laughs> Let's see what it looks like from the camera's point of view. Hmm. All right, so that was going by the house where the balloon was at about, it averaged about 23 miles per hour. So let's look at four clips put together, sped up 10 times to simulate between 230, 240 miles per hour. Pay attention, because it goes by quick. All right, did you miss it? Because you probably missed it. You pro Don't worry, I'm gonna play it back. I'm gonna stop it at each frame where the balloon is in, in the scene, and then you can count how many frames there are. You'll see, there's five. So each time I did this, uh, each time I filmed driving by at like 23 miles per hour on average, so like 22 or 23 or 24, I was getting around there. Um, and then I brought it into the software. I sped up the footage 10 times to simulate the speed of the aircraft from the original uh, footage. Um, each time I did this, when I played the video, the balloon only appeared in five frames of each video. So that matches the original video that we only have five frames at. To me, that's pretty cool. The other thing I did was Mick West had mentioned that it, 
the object moves about 4.3 times its own body length. And I wanted to test that. I wanted to see if that would uh, hold true for the video that I was shooting. So basically I cut out the, the balloon and then I pasted it, you know, uh, right in a row, one after each other and showed that in my video with, with the house and with the balloon in front of the garage, that I was also getting the 4.3 lengths of the object's own body length. Uh, so really cool that it matches all up. So I think that wraps this up. I mean, visually, we compared it to a balloon. We actually got a balloon, two of them actually. This one is starting to deflate now, but still floats. We collected a bunch more information. We talked to Mick West. He made me do math. We recreated some video. We simulated 240 miles per hour. We got five frames, just like the same as, as the original video. We did all this and it was fun. I really enjoyed it. I, I really had fun with this and, and just went crazy. So bottom line, it's most likely a balloon. That's pretty much it. And with that, I'm done. And remember to like and subscribe and also subscribe to Skeptical Inquirer magazine because that's awesome. It's an awesome place to find good information and sometimes articles by me. What? I know. All right, I'll see you next time.